Hi, I'm Frank. Welcome to All Right Now, which is a series of lessons about creative writing. And we're going to start right at the very beginning uh, by telling you what you need. You need a piece of paper and a pencil, and that's it. That's all you need. Just out of these little two little things, Hogwarts was built, Middle Earth was built, and you are going to build something amazing too. You won't need a rubber because mistakes don't matter. You won't need a dictionary because we don't care about spelling. It doesn't matter how scruffy what you do is. Uh, this is the new book that I'm writing. Take a little look inside. You can see that it's full of crossings out. It's full of blotches. Uh, it's full of shopping lists, I'm afraid. Uh, we're just going to get it down because that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if it's neat. It doesn't matter if it's spelled properly. And we're going to start today by answering the greatest question in creative writing, which is, where do ideas come from? Where did the idea for Hogwarts come from? Where did the idea for Middle Earth come from? Where did the idea for Just William come from or Narnia come from? And lots of writers have very clever answers to those questions. I've heard Douglas Adams, who's a very, very funny writer, who said, well, I get all my ideas from a shop called Ideas at Us. I just fill in a little form and send it off and they send me back ideas. And I've heard a very philosophical writer say, if I knew where my ideas came from, I would go there more often. But we do know where ideas come from. Ideas come from a very simple place. Ideas for writing come from writing. Because here's the big secret that's taken me all my life to learn. Once you start, ideas come. You just need a tiny, tiny, tiny little reason to start writing. And the minute you start writing, new ideas will come to you. They just come to you as you're writing. Because writing, making little marks on a piece of paper, is like dropping a fishing line into the sea. And when you wind that line back up, there might be anything on it. There might be a starfish on it. There might be a basking shark on it. There might be an old boot on it. But that's okay, because that old boot might turn out to be magic. All you need is a tiny, tiny, tiny grain of an idea to start with. But that tiny grain is the hardest thing, isn't it? So every one of these lessons, I'm going to read to you a piece of writing that will help inspire you and give you ideas. And today, I'm going to read you something from this. This is a first edition of a book called Chitty Chitty Bang Bang by Ian Fleming. You may know the film, you may even have read the book. It's very, very beautiful when it came, first came out. It had these gorgeous, gorgeous... It came out as three different books in one sleeve. Isn't that cool? And it had these gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations by John Birmingham. Can you see that? And you can see she looks... Chitty Chitty Bang Bang looks very different from she did in the film because she was based on a real car, an amazing car that was built in 1922 for a very eccentric man called Louis Zabrowski. And it was a huge, huge engine, massive car. It made so much noise that a law was passed forbidding it from driving into Canterbury, which is where it had been made, because it made all the windows and doors shake. And it had inside the engine, inside under the hood, it had the engine of a Zeppelin. So it could nearly fly. And I'm going to read you a little bit from it. This is a bit. Uh, when the Potts family, the Pot family, who owned the car, go out for a ride in it on the very first time they've ever taken it out for a ride so they don't know yet what you do know which is that what <laughs> they were making slow but steady progress until just outside canterbury they came upon a solid jam of cars that must have reached for at least a mile and there they were stuck at the back of the queue it really looked as if they couldn't possibly get down to the seaside in time to have a picnic let alone have a wonderful swim but suddenly, Commander Potts happened to glance at the dashboard over on the left, opposite Mimsy. And he said, I say, look at this. And Mimsy looked, and Jeremy and Jemima looked. And among all the knobs and instruments, there was a light on top of a small knob, flashing pale pink, and it was showing a word, and the word said, pull. Good heavens, said Commander Potts. I wonder what that, I've wondered what that knob was for, but it's one of the ones I haven't had time to tinker with. What can it be? Look said Mimsy. The light is turning red. And sure enough it was. And now another word was showing. And the word said, pull, you idiot. So Commander Pop pulled. And a kind of soft humming noise began. It seemed to come from all over the car. 
from the front axle, the back axle, underneath the bonnet, and then the most extraordinary transmogrification began. The big front guards, front mud guards, swivelled out so that they stuck out like wings, sharply swept back, and the smaller back mud guards did the same. The wings locked into position with a click, and at the same time, though the family couldn't see it from behind, the big radiator grille slid open like a sliding door, and the big propeller of the fan belt with the flywheel underneath that runs the petrol pump and the electric generator slowly slid forward until they were sticking right out in front of the bonnet of the car. And then on the dashboard beside another little lever, a green light started to blink and it said, pull down. And Commander Potts nervously, but this time obediently, reached over, gingerly pulled the lever very slowly down. And what in heaven's name do you think happened? Yes, you're right. The wings tilted and Commander Potter, at last realising what Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was up to, pressed on the accelerator pedal and the big green car, which was now what I might call an Euro car, tilted up her shining green and silver nose and took off. Yes, she took off like an aeroplane and soared up over the car in front, just missing her roof and roared away over the long line of stationary cars in the queue while all the people stared out of their car windows in absolute astonishment and Commander Pot called out, hang on for heaven's sake everybody. Mimsy and Jemima and Jeremy clutched their armrests and sat stiff with excitement with their eyes and mouths wide open thinking, what is going to happen next? And here's this amazing picture by John Birmingham. And why have I read you that? Two things. One is, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is kind of the beginning of what made me want to be a writer because the first film I saw in the cinema was Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And when, it, when the car fell off the cliff, can you believe this? The film stopped and a sign came up saying, intermission, ice cream is now available in the foyer. And all my cousins had gone with my cousins. They all went off to buy ice cream. And I was sitting there thinking, are you nuts? This family could die. And that was the very first time I realized that a story could be even more lovely than ice cream. <laughs> or cherry lips, which is what they really went to buy. But the other reason I've read you this is that I think Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is starts in a place where all good ideas start from, not all, where a lot of good ideas start from. And that is the thought, wouldn't it be great if, wouldn't it be great if you were stuck in traffic and suddenly your car could fly? Wouldn't it be great if you were invisible? Wouldn't it be great if you found a bag full of money? Wouldn't it be great if you could fly yourself? Wouldn't it be great if it's a really good place to start thinking of a story? And I'm, tell I'm doing this lesson during lockdown when we're all kind of locked in and we can't see our friends and we can't go out. So wouldn't it be great if that all ended? What will you do when it ends? So that's my writing mission today. I want you to go somewhere quiet with just a piece of paper and a pencil. No rubber, no dictionary, doesn't matter how you spell, doesn't matter about mistakes and write for half an hour about just this thought, wouldn't it be great if? And really what you write doesn't matter, it's where you get to. What will you pull up with that fishing rod from the deep magical ocean of your brain? See you next time.